Uh, the Commodore 16 and Plus 4, released at a very awkward time in Commodore's history, two years after the already very popular Commodore 64, just a year before the launch of the Amiga 1000, and the last project that Jack Tramiel worked on and left halfway through generally considered a bit of a dog of a system by most people. But if you've watched my channel in the past, you'll know that I've covered the C16 and Plus 4 pretty extensively because the Commodore Plus 4 was actually my first ever home computer. So I think I am actually quite well qualified to show you a few of the hidden gems on this system and clear up the rumour that there are no good games on these machines. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 games for the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. Now, if you're a fan of shoot 'em up games, the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 actually has some really nice ones, including a very decent port of Phoenix, Galaxian. This one, though, I think has to be my favourite, a game called Galaxy. Now, despite not having hardware sprites on this system, this has actually got some really nice, big, colourful graphics, decent sound as well, and the gameplay is pretty adrenaline fueled. You've got to be really careful not to kind of blast your bullets too much, otherwise you'll overheat your ship, and then you can't actually shoot until your temperature goes down. And and of course, you're faced against an ever-increasing bullet fall from enemies. Got some really interesting designs and their names as well, which have kind of stuck in my mind. I'll always remember enemies like the Quasars and the Nephars. Uh, this game is definitely worth a play. Now, this next game on the list is regarded by many people as their favourite ever game on this system. Now, it does rank a little bit lower in my chart, but, you know, still makes my top ten at number nine because I didn't get around to playing Tom Thumb until a lot later, probably around the mid-90s, but it is a very well-made platformer. In fact, you know, I go as far to say this is a technical marvel on this system. Now, it's written by the legendary Udo Gertz, who is, you know, a coder who really knew how to get the most out of the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. This has got 178 scrolling screens packed into a 16K system. And, uh, you know, it's just loads of fun, really impressive game. And a little tip, when you start playing it, if you actually press down the shift lock key on the keyboard, this will let you complete the game by having Tom run through the levels. So a much easier way to play this. Now, making number eight in my top ten is Bridgehead. This is a bit like a Green Beret clone. Um, I've only played the Commodore Plus 4 version of this, but I think there is actually a cut-down version that you can play on the Commodore 16 with less levels, and it's kind of a multi-loading game as well. But this was released by Anko Software in 1986, and it was the sequel to an earlier game called Legionnaire. Now, the idea is you are a pretty hardcore Marine who decides to take on an entire army armed with only your knife which I think you'll agree takes some serious balls, doesn't it? Now, you can pick up grenades along the way, but really, you'll only ever use them to explode mines. And uh, as a seven-year-old kid playing this, the sound effect that it plays when you collect more grenades always gave us a bit of a giggle. Now, this has got some really colourful levels and interesting stage designs, some really cool enemies as well that can do lots of different things, like firing missiles and bazookas. You've got to kind of figure out how to dodge those as the game goes on. And each level has a kind of boss stage at the end where you just get like a wave of enemies who come at you non-stop for a while. Really, this game's all about timing, but it is lots of fun. Now, at number seven on my list is the amazing Kickstart. Now, this is totally different to the Commodore 64 version. I actually remember encouraging my best friend, Sean, who had a Commodore 64, to go and pick up this game. And then I went around his house looking forward to playing it, telling him how good the game was, and then been really disappointed at the gameplay and graphics on the Commodore 64 version. It was so different. The Commodore 16 version of Kickstart is really its own game, totally different to other platforms, and in my opinion, a lot more fun as well. It just keeps it really simple. Time courses against the clock, you face obstacles and collectibles, and despite the fact that the Commodore 16 is not, you know, technically as powerful as the Commodore 64 in many ways, it does have a 121 colour palette, and it makes good use of that in this game. And in fact, this version of Kickstart is so good, it was ported to the Commodore 64 by fans in recent years. Written by the legendary Sean Southern, who later went on to do classics like the Lotus series on the Amiga, and he was definitely one of the best coders for getting speed and a squeezing potential out of the Commodore 16. So if you played this game on other platforms, definitely worth giving Kickstart a look in on the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. 
And the legendary Treasure Island makes my list at number six. Now, as far as I know, this is a Commodore Plus 4 only game. There wasn't a C16 version of this made, but it did exist on other platforms like the Spectrum and the C64, which do play pretty similar, but this version actually does away with one of the most annoying elements of the Commodore 64 version. That weird kind of starting stage where you've got to jump over barrels and there are arms kind of reaching out of it, which uh, I always found really fiddly. And I would often lose all of my lives just on that bit of the game. Luckily, the Plus 4 version just drops you straight into the action. Now, obviously, this is based on the classic Robert Louis Stevenson novel, where Jim Ladd has escaped from the stockade, and then you've got to find your way to the treasure on Treasure Island. Along the way, you need to collect stuff like the spade and the key to unlock it, battle through loads of different pirates before your final showdown with one of the scariest video game characters of all time. Long John Silver. Now, this guy will chase you all the way back to the pirate ship at the start of the game, trying to snatch the treasure off you. Still to this day, one of the most horrifying moments in video game history for me as a kid. Just one touch of Long John Silver will mean that you die and lose a life. And obviously, you know, by the end of the game, if you're down to your last life, that means starting all the way back from the beginning. The stuff of nightmares. <laughs> And I will admit to being a little bit torn as to whether I should have included this next game at number five or its prequel, Big Mac, both of which are very similar. But I think Mr. Puniverse just has the edge because, I mean, this game's set in a much bigger world and also it's got multi-screen levels which make it a bit more of a challenge. But both games are loads of fun and definitely worth a look in. Now, they did have a bit of a weird tie-in with the BBC and their Late Late Breakfast show somehow with this game. And they've kind of crowbarred that into the story as well which means that you play as a wimpy guy who needs his vitamin pills. So what you need to do is explore all of the rooms in this game, make it past various obstacles and things that are out to kill you, and collect the vitamins from each place in the game, which sounds simple, but it is really actually very tough as the game goes on. But this game's also got two-player competitive mode and also an oxygen bar that you need to keep your eye on at the bottom of the screen as well. Mr. Puniverse and Big Mac should both be in every Commodore 16 and Plus 4 collection. And at number four on my list is The Amazing Tootie Fruity. This is another Sean Southern classic, uh, a bit of a rip-off of Mr. Do, but it is very polished, got really colourful graphics, very smooth gameplay, even good music, which, you know, the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 weren't famed for their musical abilities. Now, the story is that you play Super Strawberry, who is the king of the orchard, and you've got to collect all of the ripe cherries, and in your way are the very evil acid apple gang who will wander around the orchard and uh, just one touch from them will lose one of your lives but you can actually uh, shoot little fireballs out to kill them as well or drop rotten apples on their head it's not too difficult this game doesn't pose much of a challenge but it is loads of fun and it's got that you know typical really polished Sean Southern style so Tutti Fruity definitely earns its place at number four in my list And speaking of Mr. Sean Southern, he does make number three on my list as well with the epic Trailblazer. Now, a lot of people don't realise this game actually originated on the Commodore 16. This was the first version of this. Now, it was inspired by a game called Metro Cross that was in the arcades. And really, you just play a bouncing ball um, and you're on a 3D scrolling floor. The aim of the game is to stop your ball from falling off or through the holes into deep space. And it does get increasingly challenging as you get up to warp speed, but it is loads of fun and obviously there have been many clones and ports of this to other systems over the years In at number two is one of my fondest childhood games. I used to love this and spend so much time on it. Icicle Works, which is kind of a Boulder Dash clone. As you're kind of seeing from the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 library, there are a lot of clones of games from other systems, but this is a very good one. You play a very slim-looking Santa Claus who needs to get all of his toys back together for Christmas. Now, all his presents have actually been buried under an avalanche and kind of broken into various parts. So your job is to search all of the levels for the various toy parts and reassemble them so Santa can deliver them to all of the kids on Christmas Eve. Now, your path gets blocked on the way by angry polar bears, penguins, heavy falling snowballs and blizzards as well. And there is some pretty haunting music that plays throughout the whole game too. And the fact that this game was actually bundled with a lot of the Commodore Plus 4 packs means that lots of owners have actually got this in their collection, but it is very well done.
And I didn't have to think twice about which game was going to make number one in my list. My top Commodore 16 and Plus 4 game is the epic Winter Events. By far one of the most impressive games on the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. Now again, this game comes from the legendary Udo Gertz. And this is a multi-loader sports simulation, which is just mind-blowing how he managed to fit all this into just 16K. Graphically, I'd say this game looks incredible, even better than most Commodore 64 games in this style. The controls are pretty much spot on for most of the game. A big variety of events that you can take part in, even up to four players can play this game at the same time. Now, admittedly, it can be a little bit painful to play this game from cassette tape uh, due to the fact that it's got to load in every separate stage. But, you know, that is understandable. But if you get this game on disc or an SD card, it is just brilliant and really shows off the potential of what the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 could do in the hands of a good coder. And if you do like this game, make sure you check out the equally brilliant summer events by the same coder as well. So hopefully this video has helped to dispel the myth that there are no games worth playing on the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. Obviously having experience of this system since I was a little kid, it was really hard to just get this list down to just 10 games. And I'm sure I've missed out some that you're, you know, screaming at your monitor. Why didn't you put that game in? Do let me know your favorite games on this system or maybe... You're looking at this list and thinking, actually, I wouldn't mind playing a few of those. Well, you can actually play Commodore 16 and Plus 4 games in the brilliant Vice emulation suite, which is completely free. So if you want to check that out, I'll put that link in the video description. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.